Hello, photographers. Today we're going to talk about exposure compensation, metering, why your camera is stupid, and what you can do about it. We're going to start with metering. Your camera is stupid because of how metering works. Metering is how your camera calculates the exposure of a scene. How it works is the camera measures the brightness values in the scene based on your current ISO, aperture, and shutter speed settings. It then takes those brightness values and calculates the average brightness of the scene. In this example, we have four brightness values with an average of 50%. And this scene would make the camera meter happy because what the camera meter wants is for the average brightness of the scene to be 50%. The problem is that an average brightness of 50% is not always appropriate for the photo you're trying to take. Let's say you're taking a photograph of a snowy scene like this. When the camera averages out the brightness values of the scene, it comes out to 83%. This does not make the camera happy because 83% is not 50%. And the camera expresses this to you by showing on the exposure indicator that the image will be overexposed by two-thirds of a stop. If you listen to the camera and adjust your settings to bring the exposure indicator to zero, you've now shifted the brightness values to look like this. Look at what's happened to the snow and the sky in this scene. Everything got real dull and real gray. And here's a real life example of what that looks like. It looks terrible. The snow shouldn't be dull and gray. It should be nice and bright and white. The problem is that the camera doesn't understand that with a scene that has an overabundance of brighter values, you as the photographer may want to preserve those brighter values in your image. And this problem occurs when you have predominantly dark values in a scene as well. Take a photo like this. I'm making this number up, but for the sake of the example, let's say the average brightness of this photo is 12.5%. The camera meter would read that, and on the exposure indicator, it would show the image as underexposed by two stops. However, if I had shot this so that it was two stops brighter, it would look something like this, which is really awful. All the deep, rich blacks that I wanted are gone, and we're left with this muddy gray mess. All of this is to say that you can't always trust your camera meter. Depending on what you want your photograph to look like, you may want to deliberately under or overexpose your image. Which brings us to exposure compensation. But before I talk about exposure compensation, I wanted to let you know that I put all of this information about about metering and exposure compensation into a free guide that you can get at this link right here. And you can also find the link in the description. Now, there are two aspects of exposure compensation that we need to talk about. The first is the concept of exposure compensation, and the second is the exposure compensation camera function. The concept of exposure compensation is pretty simple. Exposure compensation is when you, as the photographer, deliberately over or underexpose an image to compensate for the camera's inability to understand what you want that image to look like. If you're photographing snow and you want the snow to be nice and bright, you compensate for the fact that the camera is too stupid to understand that by overexposing. There are two ways to approach exposure compensation as a concept. One is proactive and the other is reactive. Now, neither approach is bad. I tend to be proactive, which is to say I typically look at a scene and before I adjust my settings, I decide if I want it to be over or underexposed. After deciding, I set my settings so that it's over or underexposed as I want, and then I take the photo. Figuring out whether or not you need to over or underexpose is pretty simple. If you have a scene that has a lot of bright values in it and you want to preserve those values, then you'll need to overexpose the image. How much you overexpose will vary, but the general principle is that if it's a bright scene and you want to preserve that brightness, you overexpose the image. And if it's a dark scene and you want to preserve those dark values, you'll want to underexpose the image. Now, if you're not sure what to do, you can switch to the reactive approach, which is something we have the luxury of doing in the digital era. All you have to do is start with your exposure exposure indicator at zero, and then review the image on your camera. If it's not bright enough, overexpose it. And if it's not dark enough, underexpose it and repeat that test shot and evaluation process until you're happy with the photo. And that brings us to the exposure compensation camera function. This function exists on your camera in the form of a button, usually marked with this symbol. And this function is only available to use in program auto, one of your priority modes, and in some cases in manual mode. 
In Program Auto, or either of the priority modes, you control some settings and the camera controls some settings. And in any of those modes, if you change a setting that you control, the camera automatically adjusts the settings that it controls to maintain an exposure value of zero. If you are shooting in one of those modes and you want to over or underexpose your image, you use the exposure compensation function. What you do is press and hold the button while you spin the appropriate control dial on your camera. When you do that, you'll see the exposure indicator move, and what you do is set it to your desired exposure value. So if I'm photographing snow and I want to overexpose the scene by one stop, I would set the exposure compensation to plus one. Now here's a very important thing about exposure compensation that you need to remember. It does not change back after you take your photo. If you set your exposure compensation to plus one, it stays there, overexposing every photo you take until you set it back to zero. Even if you turn the camera off and on again, it will stay set. You have to remember to change it back to zero when you're done, or the next time you grab your camera, you'll be overexposing images and wondering what the hell is wrong. Now, I mentioned that in some cases, the exposure compensation function is available in manual mode. Traditionally, this was not the case because in manual, you control the ISO aperture and shutter speed settings, which means the camera has no power to change anything. In manual, if you want to use exposure compensation, you just set your ISO aperture and shutter speed to over or underexpose the image as you desire. But now we have cameras with auto ISO functions, and if you are shooting in manual mode with auto ISO enabled, you've given some control back to the camera. With auto ISO enabled, when you set your aperture and shutter speed in manual mode, the camera automatically adjusts the ISO to bring the exposure value to zero. So when using auto ISO in manual mode, you can use the exposure compensation function when you want to over or underexpose your image. So that's exposure compensation and metering and how you can use them to outsmart your camera. And I'm wondering, out of curiosity, what camera are you currently shooting with? Let me know in the comments, which is where you'll also find out what camera I'm currently shooting with. And don't forget to visit this link right here to get your free guide to exposure compensation and metering. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And don't forget to like this video and hit that bell so you don't miss any of my videos. And then get out there and take some damn photos. One of your priority, pri priority, priority, pri priority, priority. Thank you for watching. Now, I get loads of questions and they all boil down to one thing, which is how do I make my camera do what I want it to do? And here's the thing, your camera is like an instrument and you can't make music if you can't play your instrument. If you want to learn how to play your camera like the instrument it is, visit this link right here to check out my guide to shooting in manual mode video course.